Recently, I've been talking a lot about prime lenses and specifically the 24 f1.8, the 35 1.8, and most recently the 50 millimeter f1.2. But today we're gonna to talk about a completely different lens, which is the 85 f2 STM macro lens. This lens is interesting because of how small it is and because it has that wide constant aperture of f2. Now I own and regularly carry with me the 70 to 200 f2.8 L lens. You probably recognize it because it has this white finish, it's got the red ring, and of course, it's a zoom lens. The 85 kind of sits in the middle of the range that this 70 to 200 sits at. And so for me, there's a lot of crossover between these two lenses. The apertures are pretty close. You have f2.8 versus f2. 85, of course, is inside of this. Like you can do 85 millimeter photos if you just kind of zoom in a little bit. But the disadvantage of the 85, because it is a cheaper lens, is that the image quality tends to not be as good as something like this L series lens. But we're gonna get into some photos in just a second. So my quick Coles notes summary is if you're someone who doesn't already have the 70 to 200 and you want something that's a little bit more telephoto, a little bit more zoomed in, a little bit better for portraits or detail shots, the 85 for a fraction of the cost of the 70 to 200 might be an option that you wanna consider. So I'll be honest, I've only taken the 85 with me on two trips. And on those trips, I also brought other prime lenses with me, like you've seen with the 24 millimeter where we shot some Astro, or in one of the other cases, I brought the 50 millimeter with me so we could shoot some portraits. And I found myself grabbing or reaching for those lenses more often, just because they tend to fit better with my style of photography. Looking at the photos that I've shot with this lens, you can see that there's quite a wide variety. We've got some detail close-up product shots. We've got some city, some architecture, some macro photography, and of course, we also have a few portraits. But I'm gonna jump into this shot of Bay Street because it's one I've shot before with the 70 to 200. And one thing you will notice if I zoom in, and I'm actually gonna uncheck the profile corrections because we'll get an honest representation of what this lens actually looks like. You can see that there is some kind of purple, greenish chromatic aberration around the edges where we have that high contrast. It's not a deal breaker, but it is something to note with the photos that will come out of this lens. And then of course, once I apply my preset, I think in this case we used, was it Aspen Peak? One of the ones that kind of gives it this flattish, reddish, bluish look. And if I go and zoom back in, this is where the chromatic aberration and, and the banding between the colors does become a little bit more apparent. Again, this is something that if you go in and fine tweak your profile corrections, you could probably get rid of. But again, something to take note with this lens. These next few photos are detail macro shots. And if you take a look at this lens, it actually tells you right on it that 0.35 meters or about a foot is the minimum focus distance, which at 85 means you can get nice tight details of products. So looking at this photo, you can see this is where the chromatic aberration becomes a little bit apparent around the bokeh. Like there was no green in this photo. That's just green fringing that you're getting around those bokeh, bokeh balls. <laughs> Such a weird term. But I do believe that this is where this lens in particular shines. Like the background is completely gone. I shot this photo like pretty much where I was sitting with, with that background and there's absolutely no detail in the background, but you do get all the details in the actual product. Now, again, we're in at 300% here, but this is where you can see around areas of high contrast between that black and that white, it's not quite as crisp or contrasty that you would expect from something like an L series lens, like maybe the 85 1.2 that Canon also makes. One thing to be careful with is that because this is a macro lens and it can zoom or it can focus really far and then really close, sometimes the autofocus motor takes a little bit of time to make that transition. So 
on the side of the camera lens, you do have the ability to limit or control how much that motor, motor moves. So if you only wanna focus on things that are really close, you can tell it only focus on things that are close. And then the motors or the focusing will be a little bit snappier and a little bit faster. Architectural details, this is something that I personally love to do at say a 70 or an 85 or a 100 millimeter focal length. So you're really compressing those details and really highlighting the different features of the building. Or if I go to this photo, for example, this is a photo that was shot a little bit farther away and we're bringing all of those layers together. This is a photo that was edited with my Ivory Ridge preset. And if I reset it really quick, you can see that's what it looked like before. So we're just pulling a little bit of those greens, a little bit of those oranges. And in this case, the chromatic aberration is actually not too bad, but you can see a little bit of magenta fringing. Now in this case, it was shot at sunrise. So the contrast isn't gonna be as big compared to if you had shot it in the middle of the day when you have really harsh shadows and really bright blown out skies. Macro photography is gonna be one of the main reasons why you'd wanna get this lens. Say you're doing wedding photography photography and you want to zoom in and get details of rings or in this case doing wildlife photography actually works better with an 85 than it would compared to something like a 24 or a 35 because with a 24 or 35 in order to get this scale of reproduction you need to get in really close and more than likely the frog wouldn't be too happy about that but in this case I snapped about 30 photos trying to get this guy perfectly in focus so it wasn't like a one take wonder and I got it, sometimes this lens does miss a little bit. And actually I'll reset this photo because I believe this photo is edited with my golden birch preset. But if we undo it and go back to zero, you can see I, I slightly overexposed because I wanted to retain the details in the eye of this frog, which again, if we get this close at F2, you can see there's a little bit of a softness. Like it's not that perfect creamy bokeh that you'd expect from an L series lens, but you do get a nice reproduction where you can isolate that subject from the background. And in this case, I do feel like this photo after being edited turned out pretty well. I did shoot some photos of Rich while we were on our hike at 85 millimeter. And I wanna point out this photo in particular because zoomed out, it looks good. We've got layers, we've got the foreground, we've got the background, but if I zoom in, this is where we can see the chromatic aberration and that, that little bit of softness to this lens that I was talking about. In this case, it did actually miss focus. And if I pull up, I've got a little bit of a preset plug-in here. So this plug-in shows me where the focus point was. In this case, it did hit his face. So there's a little bit of a disconnect whether the lens didn't quite nail it or maybe I moved a little bit and the autofocus motor couldn't keep up. The autofocus motors on these STM lenses are a little bit slower than what you would get on something like an L series lens. So do keep that in mind. If focus and super snappy autofocus performance is something that's critical to you, that's something that's not quite gonna be there with these STM lenses. I will say this lens excels a little bit more in controlled conditions or in shade conditions where you don't have that much contrast between your subject and the background, or in our case, shooting in conditions where you have a controlled studio environment, like with this photo, you know, it got the focus perfectly nailed right on her left eye. If I zoom in even more, yeah, you can see the focus is somewhere around here. Now it's not as crispy sharp compared to some of my other lenses, but again, we're pixel peeping here, zoomed out all the way. That is a perfectly usable photo for a professional scenario. So that's kind of my quick rundown of the 85 F2, just showing you the types of photos that you can expect with this lens. I'm not keeping this lens. This one actually goes back to Canon who lent it to me for a month. So thank you for Canon for sending that lens and hopefully I'll be able to test a few more in the future. So if there's a specific lens that you want to see that I haven't already covered on this channel, let me know down below and I'll, I'll see if I can get it in. But if you wanna see any of those lenses that I talked about at the beginning, the 24, the 35, the 50, I'll put some videos here now that you can check out if you wanna see more photo examples from those lenses. And until the next one, go shoot photos.